Greetings. My name is Sergei Berkatovsky, and I'm the producer for Wargaming.net. Stay tuned and join the dark side. We have not just simple cookies, we have oatmeal cookies. So the first question is, there were only the Tier 10 heavy tanks, and you told the community that you are not going to create the Tier 10 MTs and TDs because the Tier 9 vehicles are really powerful. Why did you decide to further develop these branches? And what kind of changes are you going to make in the game with the addition of Tier 10 tanks? Excuse me, but I'll answer the last part of your question first. These changes will bring some balance to the overall gameplay. This is the main reason for developing these tanks. We were planning to make the trees very large, where the heavy tanks fill up Tier 10, the tank destroyers fill out at Tier 9, and the medium tanks and self-propelled guns belong to Tier 8. Then we decided to make the branches a little more equal. We are going to develop the Tier 10 medium tanks and tank destroyers in order to make the length of all branches the same, so we can further fine-tune the game balance. We hope that this will be a great improvement. So how are you going to change the Tier 9 MTs and TDs? It's too early to talk about it, but we can answer this question after some testing. What changes can you predict in the setups of the companies on the global map? I think that the users which are playing on the global map will have to decide that. These changes may or may not influence their decisions. And what amount of experience should the players earn to research the Tier 10 vehicles? I can't tell you the exact amount of these points, but I suppose that the total amount of experience, which includes the cost of all modules, will be similar to the total amount of experience for researching the Tier 10 heavy tanks. Will the Tier 10 MTs start at elite status, just like the Tier 10 HT? First, not every Tier 10 heavy tank starts at elite status. For example, the E-100 can be equipped with an additional gun, which you must research first. So some of the new tanks will be the same way. The M-48 is a good example because this tank comes equipped with the 90mm gun. Obviously, it's not very powerful for a Tier 9. We will give the players an opportunity to research the new gun, M-68, with their experience. Have you got any plans for the SPGs and LTs branches? Are you going to add something new? And what will it be? Well, I'll start with the easier question, the question about the LTs. We are going to add the French Tier 8 light tanks. We will add the Tier 8 light tanks for other nations as well. Unfortunately, we have not found satisfactory vehicles to develop the higher Tier light tanks for all nations. Tier 8 tanks for some nations are creating problems for us. The USSR light tanks are the worst in this regard, because the Soviet engineers had to concentrate on other vehicles up to 1945 for obvious reasons. After 1945, the engineers went into developing amphibious tanks. We don't see the point in adding these types of tanks at this time. The swimming tanks might be useful if you cross the river without alerting the enemy and sneak attack something. But our maps aren't that big yet. We might think about the amphibious tanks. Do not confuse that with, we will create them. But only Project Chaos will be successful. This project includes giant maps, which will be about three kilometers and a large amount of tanks. As for the artillery, we think that the Tier 8 self-propelled guns are powerful enough already. But we've decided to create some new vehicles and move the Tier 8 SPGs to the 10th tier in order to make the balance and researching of these vehicles easier. As for game modes, how successful was the adding of the new modes? What were the most successful and unsuccessful features of the new game modes? The most unsuccessful game mode was the one called Escort, so we haven't added it into the game. This game mode requires a high level of teamwork and, of course, the attention of the high-tier players because they are given the role of the VIP, so they have to reach the designated area to win. This game mode was awesome when the super testers were playing at it, but it was really chaotic when we did not control them. We decided that it was a bad idea to add this mode for random players. Pardon me, but in contrast to the super testers, the average players have less discipline and group reaction time. Some of the same problems are happening with the game mode Assault. The super testers have learned the new positions for the maps and have created useful tactics for the assaulting and defending teams. Unfortunately, you can't see these tactics in random games. 
because the average players don't always work as a team. We decided to remove some maps from Assault because the random players weren't devising any tactics for these maps. Let me give you some advice. You should think about moving your artillery to the flanks on Malinovka and Prohorovka. And of course, ready the defense against scouts and the counterattacks. If you do that, the defenders will feel really bad. The key words are, you should think as a group. But that is a challenge in random games. You made these game modes part of the random queue. Why did you decide to add the function of choosing the game mode? We made it in order to give the opportunity for everyone to enjoy their favorite game modes. Are you going to add some new game modes? And will you develop game modes where players can fight against bots? You've added a similar mode in WOWP. No, we are not going to add bots. Really, we are not planning to add them in the foreseeable future. The training battles might be the only exception, mostly because bots in the air are more difficult targets than the bots on the ground. In our game, the players earn experience points in battles with real people. That's why it's not so easy to farm. When speaking about bots, whose algorithm you will soon understand, you can just grind and grind these poor bots. I think it would make our game too boring, so we don't like bots. As for the new game modes, are you going to add the new modes? Are you just planning to add them, or are you developing them now? As I said earlier, we are not planning to add Escort. Pardon me, but we can't trust the discipline of players in the random queue yet. As for historical battles and garage battles, we are developing these game modes currently. We might release historical battles sooner. We are going to release these game modes by the new year. However, I am worried that we may not have enough time to make these game modes because it still needs a lot more preparation. Before we release historical battles and garage battles, we decided to add some features to the regular game modes in order to make them easier. You are planning to replace the hotkey messages with a flower of commands. Could you please clarify some details about these changes? I'll talk about the command flower. The command flower contains eight petals. This flower appears at the center of the screen after pressing the control button. You can then click on any petal. We might make several levels of these petals. After you click on a petal, the command will appear on the screen. Are you going to add the function of turning the game chat off? Nope. Are the developers going to add some kind of the player's karma that can be changed by the other players by pressing plus or minus buttons? You know, we gave you the pluses and minuses on your forum. If you join World of Tanks, you should play with tanks. Are you going to add wider functions for the personalization of tank skins? For example, giving the ability to add circles on the gun, or the serial names or numbers of the vehicle, or the signatures like to Berlin and so on. I suppose that we will add the signatures sometime in the near future. The numbers and other stuff will be added soon as well. The main problem is the limited amount of stickers which are placed on the tank. We can't add an unlimited amount of customization. I'm so sorry, but we will add as much as we can. The players complain that you haven't removed red screen. Can you remove it? And when will you do it? Red screen is the problem beyond our responsibility and the responsibility of the programmers who are creating drivers for the video card. We can fix only that which lies in our domain, but we can't fix the mistakes of the programmers. It is a difficult task because it involves game design and computer science. But we are trying to remove this problem. Unfortunately, this task lies in two spheres of business, so we can't be sure when we will eliminate red screen. In the previous episode, you said the developers create the different nations by giving them unique features. So what is the main feature of the British vehicles? Can you reveal the features of the heavy and medium tanks?